For the ones who know safety isn't a catchphrase, it's a culture. And the ones who help make sure everyone makes it home safe. For the safety-minded who watch everyone's backs, Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry, as well as safety assessments and training to keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to an April 1st edition of Today in Sports Betting presented by Hoop-Ball.com. I'm your host, Vince Miracle. You guys can follow me on all social media platforms of at VM Center. And I'll be honest, guys, this is take two. Kids interrupted take one. And uh, my energy is still heck of high because, again, I am not alone. The production team is, is, is giving me people to talk to so i don't have to keep rambling on and on like i'm doing right now let me present to you the one only keith cork brand new member of the the sports betting division but i heard you've been doing a lot of dfs stuff for hoop ball.com right yeah man i've been around for uh basically the whole season here on the dfs side but I've been putting up some prop bets and i've been you know active in the discord here so i figured i'd uh join your pod here and see see how it goes yeah man i mean prop bets are so much fun i feel like dfs players tend to love going to those prop bets online. And if you can already gauge how players make value according to the dollar, I'm sure you can already look and say, you know, eight, oh, over eight assists, over nine assists, over 10 rebounds or whatever. So that's really cool. I'm excited to have you on to see what you're seeing out there, especially for a seven game slate on a Thursday, Keith, which is kind of ridiculous. I thought maybe it was like when I opened it, I was like four games, right? You're like, no, I think it's seven. I was blown away. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was like, Damn, that's almost a full card. And what was it Wednesday just here with 12? Insane. Uh, yeah, we had, we had quite a few. And man, man it's a few more games, you know, just a little bit more opportunity. So it's all good, man. Let's let's get into it. And let's get some money. <laughs> let's jump on in. Let's start filling this bag with the first game up at 4 p.m. We have the Philadelphia 76ers as 10 point favorites here on the road against the Cleveland Cavaliers. The line sits at minus 560 for the Sixers plus 380 for the Cavs. And the points are a over under of 213. Me personally, Keith, I'm staying away from this game. I don't like the double digit spread. Obviously, the money line is not where it's going to be at with those crazy those crazy spreads there at a plus 380 and a minus 500. The over under kind of intrigues me a little bit. I would go with the slight under. I can see the Sixers just taking off, but not even needing to break 100 points. But that's just me looking at the the clear lines. What about you, Keith? Are you seeing anything inside the game? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm right there with you. I don't really like any, too much about this. I mean, 76ers have dropped too straight. And, you know, against the last couple uh, teams have had lackluster uh, defenses, they only imagine eight point victory uh, against the LeBron Los Lakers and a 10 point victory over the uh, Golden State Warriors without Steph Curry. So uh, gun to my head, I'd probably take, you know, Cavs plus 10, but I, I'm not going to lay anything on this personally. Yeah, this game is just too sketchy to play on. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And this game, I, I call it the gritty poo poo team. <laughs> uh, for both of them, it's the gritty, uh, the gritty poo poo team bowl, and it's the Washington Wizards three point favorites over the Detroit Pistons, uh, minus 150 to a plus 130 home team at, who are the Pistons, and then the over under on points set at 222 and a half. Right off the bat, here, Keith, again, for me, I'm looking at the over on the 222 and a half. I can see both teams playing absolutely no defense and a lot of layup and threes being taken in this game. Uh, and Corey Joseph, for some reason, is starting to become a baller out in Detroit for these people. Please don't buy into that hype, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is fake news. Uh, I still like the Wizards here, minus three uh, as well. I think the Wizards can pull this one out. They have been playing better, and the Pistons, as gritty as they are and as scrappy as they can be, I just don't trust them. And I think the Wizards are, in their mind, still fighting to be in the playoffs. So I, I like Wizards minus three, but I like over two, 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 two and a half. Yeah, I'm, I'm, again, I'm right there with you, man. Two, two, two and a half was what I was really looking at here. I've got a lot of interest in there. I'm not, don't have enough interest to lay it on there. Um, I could see putting it up, putting a, a bet on there because you're thinking that you know maybe Bradley Beal suits up. Uh, that'd be a big boon to your your over two two point five play there. But um, 
Yeah, I, I can't. I can't get get enough to like it. I think the Pistons, you know, as the the season wears on, they're going to start sitting their guys. I mean, they want to play their young guys. They have nothing to play for. They're bottom of the standings, quite literally. So, uh, at some point, someone's going to make a lot of money off just betting against those Pistons over and over again. And, and it might be here already, but um, I, I can't uh, take the, the Wizards here, unfortunately. Yeah, I, the, my big thing is, uh, like you said, I, I think you you take the risk early on with a low spread the hope that Bradley Beal plays Mm -hmm. and then say, Hey, cause you know, that line is going to jump up significantly if he does get announced that he's playing. And if it's way well before tip off, like if in the next 30 minutes while we're recording a Bradley Beal news drops, that line's going to go up at least a point and a half to where it's minus Mm -hmm. five to, to, to the wizards. And I don't think I'm comfortable taking that, but here at minus three with the potential of Bradley Beal, this team's already been playing better. I like that there. And then again, over 222 and a half. I feel like that's just an easy bet to just lean on for, for just the, for just the, maybe like a, 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 a one unit, nothing more than a unit and a half though, you know, mm-hmm. right there with you. Uh, any, any props on this one? I mean, I, I, there is, there's one in here of over 11 and a half points for Mason Plumley. <laughs> No, no props. Uh, I did look at some Mason Plumley lines because obviously the Wiz are just terrible inside. I was looking, I was actually looking at some unders for Mason Plumley because I had a sneaking suspicion that they uh, wound up playing Mason a little bit less on back to backs. Mm. Um, but that's not the case. It, you know, if you look at it, he actually plays just about his, his normal amount, amount of minutes now. Uh, at the beginning of the season, they were playing him about 19, 20 minutes in back to backs, but uh, now he's up to the whole thing, the whole shebane so i uh, don't like anything there but i do have some dfs plays here if you want a mid-range play on dfs for FanDuel or DraftKings, uh yeah mason plumley at 6k on both those sites is a, is a solid solid bet the Wiz team is just so bad in on the interior and uh, they don't have gafford anymore gafford got injured so uh, you know mason plumley up against uh, alex len and, and robin lopez happy to take that on dfs and i also have uh, obviously russell westbrook he's 11k on, on DraftKings and 11.3k uh, on, on FanDuel. so so he's pretty expensive. You're playing a paying a premium there for him, but um, yeah, he really uh, he's going to be worth it, especially if Bradley Beal misses. If Bradley Beal's playing, I'd stay away. But uh, if Bradley Beal misses, he's going he's due for a big game here because uh, the uh, Pistons are not very good defensively. Yeah, I, I like both those. The reason why I, I, I'm all about Mason Plumley today, that's why I'm going to go with the over on 11 and a half on those points. Is like you said, the interior for the Wizards is basically Russell Westbrook right now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> with, with, with Gafford gone, Alex Len has been good sometimes. Lopez has been good sometimes. Like, and they they all split minutes. You're, you're basically going to see 15, 15, 15 from, uh, from all three of their centers. I don't know, man. I, I just feel like Mason Plumley is more than capable of rebounding, passing, and doing that ugly floater that he does. <laughs> so I, I, I like him, especially as a DFS play. If he's only $6,000 today, I, I would for sure look at him as a uh, – mid-range center for sure mm-hmm. next game up we have the hornets as two point underdogs to a brooklyn nets team that's already announced that blake griffin is out james harden is out kyrie irving is playing and lamarcus aldridge is playing they are two point favorites at home the line sits at plus 115 to a minus 135 to the nets and then the over under total is 221 and a half keith what are your thoughts on this game yeah, I don't know, man. This is looking more and more like a coin flip. I don't mind laying a, a minus two on the Nets here. Uh, I mean, they're the far superior team, uh, obviously. I, I think, and uh, but I could easily see the Hornets beating them too. So I don't know. It's too much of a coin flip for me. I really don't have anything here. I do have a DFS play in this one though. Also, it's a value play. Uh, Cody Zeller. He's only thirty nine hundred on DraftKings and four point six k on, on FanDuel, uh, and that's a really a great value against a big man going against a really weak interior defense. The Nets just can't defend any bigs. And uh, even, you know, even if LaMarcus Aldridge is playing, he doesn't scare me defensively at all. So uh, Cody Zeller is a, a huge, uh, a huge value here. But as far as the, the game line goes, I don't have any interest there. What are your thoughts on Bruce Brown again today, maybe as a DFS play? Because I feel like with no Harden, obviously still no KD. I mean, his role is still going to be significant in, in this offense now, right? Yeah, I think you can definitely go there. I, I you know, Kyrie's still there. He's going to have a lot of usage. So um, I temper my expectations a little bit when it comes to Bruce Brown. He has some big games here and there, and I don't mind going to him, but uh, he's not my, my top guy, I don't think. Who would you rather have in a lineup today, a Russell Westbrook at 11-3 or a Kyrie Irving? I think was he at, uh, 
10 9, K. I 10K. think yeah, nine, 10 K is, I think it was 10 can I'm feeling there'll be, might be cheaper on DraftKings, but uh, that's a good question, man. I, I mean, I think if you know for sure that Bradley Beal's out, I don't think you can pass on Russell Westbrook, but um, if Bradley Beal's in, or you're just not sure he's still questionable, I don't mind playing some Kyrie Irving. Uh, Kyrie's going to have a big game for sure. They're going to need him. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I, I for me, uh, just in terms of where I'm going with this, I think I am as well with you. I'm, a, I'm, a, but instead of going minus two, I'm gonna go with the Nets just winning the game at minus one thirty five. Again, I know Danny B doesn't like when I promote those, but it's not in the wager pass. It's here on the podcast. That's what I like. I feel comfortable just saying minus one thirty five. Take the Brooklyn Nets. Um, I, I think they're gonna try to use Lamarcus Aldridge as much as possible to see what they have with him, but. Yeah, man, I, I I'm with the I'm with the Nets here at minus one thirty five. I'm diving into some of these prop bets as well, and I see an over under here on Bruce Brown's rebounds, and it's only five and a half. Is it is it just me, or is it w- with Harden out and again KD still being out, and how big of a role he plays in their offense? Keith, do you think he can go over five and a half rebounds here? I, I very well think he could. I'm trying to pull up his uh, game log here because it's I didn't actually even look at that one. It's a good point, though. Um, let me see. So you said it's 5.5 over? Yeah, oh, the over-under currently sits at 5.5. And, yeah, I'm looking at his rebounding chart right here in front of me as well. Yeah, so anytime he gets 28 or more minutes, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven out of nine games looks like when he got 28 or more minutes, he he has hit that mark. So I, yeah, I think I think it's a solid bet for sure. Uh, not one that I had circled, but uh, I'd go for it. Yeah, Bruce Brown. Every time there's two key members out, I, and I, I I am blown away with how they use him for being like a kind of undersized shooting guard. And you can basically say he's a point guard that plays the shooting guard position. They play him like a big man in a lot of sets. Mm -hmm. And I find him very, very interesting, especially now with Blake Griffin out, KD and Harden. There's a lot of rebounds to be had. I I can definitely see him grabbing those. I wouldn't be surprised if you see him have one of his like 13, eight and four games with Mm -hmm. maybe even a steal and a block. Like I, I'm pretty high on Bruce Brown. I really like the way he <laughs> plays with this team. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can't blame you, man. It's like I said, it's just not a guy I typically look at, but uh, yeah, you're putting up some good points, man. I love it. Let's go ahead and move on to this next game, and I find this game to be one of the more interesting ones of the night, and that's the Golden State Warriors on the road in Miami as three point underdogs to the Heat. Uh, the spread sit, sits currently at plus one thirty to a minus one fifty. But here's the thing, right here, this one's crazy to me. The over under sits at 218. And I feel like that's really low in a Warriors Heat game. And I, I know the Heat's defense is good. I know the Warriors offense has been decent. Uh I don't know. I, I just feel like there's points to be had on both sides. What are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, I think you make some good points. I, I'm gonna take a page out of Dan's book playbook here. And you know, the Heat are gonna try to integrate uh Oladipo in this game. Uh, I actually grabbed the plus two point five when it was a two point five point spread, so I'm a little upset because it's now it's a plus three. Uh, but I do like the Warriors plus three and have to put a unit on it, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh and assume you know suggest people do that because uh, they are integrating Ol- Oladipo. They're on a back-to-back and they're coming off a, a grinded out type game where they won against the Pacers. Um, just think it's due for a letdown. I think the Warriors might actually even even sneak this one. Um, the over-under, uh, maybe, I don't know. It seems more like a coin flip to me. I'm not too too interested in it, but I can see what you're saying for sure. Yeah, this one confuses me. Like The points being so low makes me think that it's going to be a close game. And if it's a close game, I kind of like the Warriors' ability to, like you said, for one, the camaraderie. They're not trying to integrate anybody new. Mm -hmm. But they have so many people that can just stop and get their own bucket by themselves, as well as running sets and getting an open three for a guy like Curry or Oubre or setting up a post spin for Wiggins. Like, I, I think I'm with you, man. I think at plus three... The Warriors look good, and I mean, is it just me, or is the Heat kind of not playing as well as you would hope they'd be playing at this time? And maybe you're just not really believing in them. Like, at least that's for me. I'm not really believing in them just yet. Yeah, they've they've struggled, man. They, the whole first half of the season basically was just COVID city for them, and um, I just feel like you know some people are still dealing with some effects from that. You're hearing more and more quotes from people about 
players dealing with the long-term effects of that. And it affects everyone differently, obviously. And that could be what's going on here. I don't have any confirmation on that, but that's just speculation. But uh, yeah, they have been pretty underwhelming this, this season. And um, I don't know, maybe Oladipo gives them a, a, a shot of life here, but um, I think the first couple of games he's in, it's going to be rough to get him integrated. Yeah. I'm about to go in here and click on the props to see if they have anything on Oladipo. But before I do, I want to remind everyone that this show is sponsored by MyBookie.ag. guys, all these bets that we're looking up here for today's NBA games. Maybe you're watching opening day baseball, which we covered yesterday. And then Devin just put out a two hour whopper on that one. So if you guys haven't listened to that podcast, finish this one, go back to that one. You guys are going to hear a ton of baseball conversation on Devin's podcast from early, earlier this morning. But again, that show and this is sponsored by mybookie.ag. Make your bets on basketball, baseball, football, celebrity, pop culture, politics, whatever it may be. Mybookie.ag has you covered. When signing up, be sure to use the promo code HOOPBALL, that's H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L, and they will match up to $500 of your very first deposit. And Keith, I got to ask you a question, my man. Do you have hairs growing out of all your holes? <laughs> I think as any man, uh, any man does. Yes, of course. <laughs> See, well, then let me tell you, this is a new product alert for you, my friend. Have you ever heard of this thing called Manscaped in their weed whacker, Keith? Because this machine will clear all your holes. I mean, all of them. My ears have never heard the sun come up more until I've got the weed whacker machine and trimmed up the insides of my ears. My nose has never breathed so well in this pollen air because of that weed whacker i'm telling you that thing clears your air go to manscape.com get yours today by using promo code hoopball and get that discount keith i'm now back on the props and thank you for letting me use you as a promo read <laughs> no <laughs> uh, worries they, they actually have nothing on oladipo yeah yeah and this is now this is where i tend to look at the other players that he may be affecting right Jimmy Butler's over under sits at 22 and a half. I believe that Jimmy Butler is a underrated leader and teammate. I think a lot of people just say that he's more of like a bully leader. I don't believe that. You can just tell by the way conversations are had on the court and by reports you read. He's not that. I think he's going to be very passive in this game, willing to show to be a leader and get Oladipo involved. The over under on 22 and a half points. I'm looking at the under on that one. Now, it does, that does sit at minus 135, but still, I like under 22 and a half. I feel like that's a good one to uh, to maybe put a unit, unit and a half on. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there with you, man. I'm, it's not something I'm uh, personally putting it on, but if uh, I had to lean a certain way, yeah, I'd lean the under there for sure. Do you have any props on this one by chance? I don't on this one. I've got some coming up. And actually, we did skip over. I, you know, I apologize. I, let me let me go back to the first game. The 76ers and the Cavs. This is actually my favorite prop bet of the night uh, to play a prop. It's actually Danny Green uh, over 2.5 three-pointers made. It's a plus 118 on that. Uh, I'm putting down two units to win 2.4. And uh, the fact that it's plus 118 is just insane. Dude, Danny Green has hit hit over 2.5 three-pointers in six of his last seven games, and he's shooting 8.4 three-point attempts per game. Uh, you got you to combine that with the fact that the Cavs are 27th in opponent field three-point percentage. They're at 38.4%. Their opponents are shooting from three, and uh, it's just a recipe for I, – I like him to get even over three, but I'll stick with the three to be safe. But uh, they're giving p- positive odds on that, and uh, he only got 23 minutes last game. I don't know the story behind that. Uh, every other game before that, though, he's getting you know the, the regular 27-plus minutes, so – as long as he's getting those regular minutes, I'm, I'm happy to put the, that money on Danny Green. So the bet is over two and a half? Over two and a half three-pointers made for Danny Green. Danny the Manny Green. And uh, what's the payout on that one? Uh, so it's plus 118. So if I do two nice. units, it'll be 2.4. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, because I'm on a, I'm on a player performance double-double, and I see Danny Green to have three or more three-pointers. And Philadelphia wins this game, currently sits at a plus 108. That's an interesting uh, double player player performance double-double that I like to see there, too. That, that pairs in well. I didn't know that, though, that he in six out of his last seven games, three or more three-pointers. Yep, and he, have, he even had one where he had eight, eight out of 12 from the three-point line. Like, this guy, this I mean, that's his main function on this team. So it's just crazy to me that they're giving positive odds here. I like it a lot. I almost laid three units on it, but, I, you know, as I've been saying, I'm kind of still a little new to this, so I'm a little nervous to lay, lay all three units on it. But Take a deep breath, Ian. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll lay another one on it later. Who knows? <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to this next one here, Keith. And 
Man, I, I, I don't know why, but this spread surprises me. And it's the Orlando Magic, three and a half point underdogs here to this New Orleans, New Orleans Pelicans team. Minus 175 to the Pels who are at home to a plus 155 Magic team. The over-under sits at 213 and a half. Before I give my thoughts, Keith, what are yours on this game here? Oh, man, this game's going to be ugly. There's no Zion. There's no Lonzo. Those guys were just ruled, ruled out uh, like an hour or two ago. Um, I just – I can't I, – I can't – the Pels have been playing better recently, but no Lonzo, no Zion. I, can I trust Nikhil Alexander-Walker and, and you know, Kira Lewis Jr. to to carry my, my, my team to victory? I don't know. Uh, putting it on Pelicans minus four is tough for me. And uh, the Magic are just in chaos, man. I've been trying to track these guys' minutes, and, and I think the rotations will eventually shake out. But right now, they're just kind of figuring crap out. And uh, obviously, they're not super interested in winning basketball games right now. So putting a bet on them plus four, I, I just I can't do that either. So I, I don't have any interest in the money line here. But the DFS side of things, some of those guys I mentioned, Akilah Alexander-Walker, uh, Kira Lewis Jr. I'd also look at Josh Hart. Josh Hart seems like a, a really, really uh, good play. Uh, he just – rebounds good for a guard rebound you know all that good stuff i haven't looked at their player props since the zion was uh, and uh, lonzo ruled out but um, yeah they're they're wonky right now they're yeah if you're getting some good uh like you know 5.5 rebounds or something for josh hart which i don't know if that's on there but if it is i'm snagging it for sure so uh but yeah that's i i don't like the money line or anything like that here yeah this this game is like i i don't even i'm surprised they even made a spread and i think three and you, you have it as four. I just think that's too much when mm-hmm. you're looking at this Pell's depth. I mean, I don't know, man. This, I mean, I get it. The magic complete reset, right? Like they, they, they don't know what they're doing. They're just saying restart. Give me, give me all the rookies I can get. And let's just see what I got. I mean, is the, is does that mean Josh Hart at 5,300 on Fanduel is good? Maybe. Does that mean any bets make sense? I don't know. I think I'm avoiding this game as a whole. Do, do you look at that over under at two, was it 213 and a half and go, wow, that's really low for an NBA game? <laughs> I mean, I certainly do. Can I bet the over confidently? No, I, I can't. Not with all these guys out, um, yeah. but it is low. That's a low, low, low total. <laughs> That one just, that's 213. That was just so low. Let's go ahead and go on to this next game because I think this is the best game of the night. I'm I'm the most excited for this game right here, and it, and it's not even the last game, so that's really good. Uh, <laughs> it's the Hawks versus the Spurs. They're on the road in San Antonio, the Hawks are. It's a pick em. There's no money line bet, at least not when I'm looking right now. It currently sits at minus 110 apiece just on picks alone. The over-under is at 222. No hook in there, just an even 222. Keith, I, I don't even know who I'm picking, but I have to pick one. Yep. Yeah. I, I, dude, who, who are you going with? Tell me. I, uh, I'm rolling with Ice Trey and the Capella Project. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm with the ATL, baby. <laughs> hey, you know what? Just until recently, I was with you. I think the, the Hawks are probably, they, they've lost four out of the last five, and I think they're due for, uh, you know, kind of a bounce back game. But then John Collins was ruled out. So I actually went and snagged the Spurs, uh, the Spurs minus 110 over there for a, a whole, you know, 1.1 units to win one because. Uh, I just think John Collins is the second best player on that team. I, they don't rely on him a whole ton. He doesn't get a, a ton of usage, but um, he's kind of, I mean, he's an anchor for them, man. So uh, missing them, I just don't see how they beat the Spurs team. Who's you know playing pretty good basketball. They're, they're beating teams left and right that they should be beating. So I like the Spurs here. I don't mind going Hawks. I think it is kind of a coin flip, but I lean Spurs enough to, to put a bet on it. Um, and I do think that you, you can look at some DFS stuff here. DeJounte Murray, he's a mid-tier play, uh, 7.1K on, on DraftKings and 7.8K on FanDuel. He's going to get some steals. I mean, Trey Young's got over 30% usage here. So uh, when he gets those steals, especially FanDuel, where you get three points for every steal, he's uh, definitely worth look, take, giving a look. Uh, and then uh, here's, here's one of my player plops here. DeMar DeRozan, over 21.5 points. That's a minus 110 on that. I'm putting 1.1 unit to win one. Uh, DDR, he put up 23 points and eight assists against the same Hawks team back in February. I think it was February 12th, I think they played. And uh, he only played 25 minutes and 42 seconds in that game. So uh, if he gets a full 30 minutes, he plays big minutes and in, in back-to-backs. I mean, I was looking at that again, you know, just to make sure Pop wasn't sitting this guy left and right, and he's not. Um, then I like him to go over 21.5 points. I think that's a solid bet. So I, I'm putting a whole a whole uh, unit on it. The only thing I might throw a wrench in it is if uh, DeAndre Hunter, uh, who is uh, questionable tonight, he might be back. He's a really good defender. So they might stick him on DDR, and that might throw a little wrench in things, but I'm not too worried about it. All right, so 
Lots of breakdown there. Number Sorry. one, I completely <laughs> agree with the DeRozan thing. I think DeRozan, I think he's being a, 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 I don't think he's undervalued, but I feel like he's just underappreciated, I think, as good of a player that he is. I really like DeMar DeRozan. I like everything that you said about him. But let me give you my take on why I think the, the, the Hawks are going to beat this Spurs team because you just laid it out there. And you kind of made me nervous. But you know what? Look at this. Danilo Gallinari has been playing phenomenal lately coming off the bench. He's going to start into the he's going to step into the starting role. Feel that John Collins roll out him against Rudy Gay, him against Keldon Johnson. That makes sense. Yaka Pertle, he's a big body. He can't handle the Capella project. Clint Capella has been the man. Flex on him one time. If they do get back DeAndre Hunter, yes, I think he's going to be a really good player. He's not slowing down DeMar DeRozan. I can see DeMar DeRozan saying, oh, that was cute that you're playing. You're out of the game because of foul trouble. I think the X factor in this game for the Hawks, though, is going to be Bogdan Bogdanovich. He's been playing better as of late, knocking down three-pointers, has really been getting better at driving and kicking. I think he's starting to trust his knee is better uh, by the way that he's been playing as of late. So I do think he is the X factor in this game. I think it's going to come down to the last three minutes of the fourth quarter to, to see who's actually going to win this game. And because the coin is still flipping in the air, I still choose the bird on the tail side. I'm going with the Hawks. Hey man, I, I can't I can't fault you there. I you know these Hawks this Hawks team is volatile. They've got uh, a high octane offense, and any given night they can go off for 130 points. So I you know no no by any means uh, the Spurs winning is not a lock. So I don't mind it. Over under 222. Is it just me or does the over just smell a little tasty? This yeah, it does. It smells tasty. It does. I, I'm betting the Spurs to win this one, so I don't want to put too much on it. But if you want to put some on there, I don't mind. Man, I'm sorry. I got paused and distracted. The New York Yankees just lost on opening day. Oh, bummer. Oh, that's my first one gone. Ugh. Heartbreak, heartbreak. That's why I can't wait for this NBA game slate to come on. I feel confident about our picks today, Keith. Confident. Do it. Last game. Nuggets, Clippers, big game. Don't know if PG is playing. Kawhi Leonard does look like he is playing. They got Aaron Gordon saying they have no limitations. This Nuggets team has no limitations because he has now joined it. He's actually looked good. Well, Barton sucked for me the other day. I need him to step it up. (laughs) Nuggets are two and a half point favorites here on the road in LA against the Clippers minus 140 to a plus 120. The over under currently sits at 219. Keith, your thoughts. Tell me you're picking the right team here. <laughs> well, uh, Paul George is out. He's out on this one. So is Ibaka. Um, and then who else? Uh, Patrick Beverly, obviously. Rondo out. Um, so they've got you know, quite a few people out on, on the Clippers. So uh, I think it's easy for people to, to lean towards the Nuggets. But I'm going to blow some minds here. I'm actually going to be putting a, a, a unit on on the uh, clips. And I'm not advising people to follow that. This is more of a fun bet for me. It's plus 110 for the odds there. Um, the Clippers are 6-7 and seven without Paul George on the season. So uh, it's not like they get markedly worse. I mean, they can still win basketball games. And one of them was against the, the Milwaukee Bucks. They, won, they beat them by like 24 points or something like that, which uh, might say more about the Bucks than it does the Clips. But uh, I think it's – I honestly think it's about a coin flip between these two teams, even without Paul George. And so it's, since it's plus 110, I'm actually going to put five bucks on there. Uh, put, put a little unit on there for me. That's my unit. And, uh, you know, so uh, it's refl- it's two-point spread. So, you know, obviously Vegas thinks it's going to be a close game too. So uh, coin flip, I'm getting positive odds. I'm going there. Uh, I do have a player prop here also. Kawhi Leonard under 5.5 assists and uh, pl- plus 108 on that on those odds i'm putting down 1.5 units to win 1.6 units uh Kawhi is definitely going to have the ball in his hand more without pg-13 in there but that does not translate very well to his assist total uh he only hit the over there in uh, two out of the eight games without paul george and marcus morris is also questionable he might play he had his calf issue uh he's a little bit more probably on the probable side so he might play but uh, if he doesn't i like this i'm probably going to sprinkle a little bit more on this under here um but if you take a look at the two highest scores in each of the clippers games without pg you got marcus morris on there nearly half the time and you got Lee will on there five out of the eight games so those guys aren't going to be there. Well, Marcus Morris might, but Lou Will definitely won't be there. So who's who's Kawhi going to pass it to? Uh, Kawhi is probably going to score a lot, and I, I think he'll probably you know put, probably put up 30, 32 points. And I don't mind going on the over for his points uh, prop, but it, the under on the assist prop just seems more likely to me. And uh, I just love the odds here at the plus one hundred eight. Can I give you a plus four twenty five prop? 
Yes. That I'm going to bet on, and I want to hear your thoughts. Actually, just so you know, during that entire time, you were talking about the points about Kawhi Leonard. I was looking into like props for him, and maybe I could find a bet to give here on the show. But I found this Jamal Murray one, mm-hmm. and I just put a half unit on it. Just a little quick 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. 425. Jamal Murray scores 20 or more points and has two or more steals. Mm-hmm. Plus 425. I like it. Is it winnable? Can it happen? Yeah, of course. Oh, of course. I don't know, man. I get, <laughs> I, I, I'm looking at his steals now. I mean, he got three steals the other day, but then after that was one, 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 two. And then one, one, one. But then he gets these games where he gets like four steals against Charlotte and Chicago. Mm-hmm. Three steals against Philly. I just think Reggie Jackson is not good at handling the basketball. Mm-hmm. He said, I think Kawhi Leonard's not going to have many people to pass to, so it's a lot of toss-ups, and he's going to be running halfway down the court, and he has the ball in his hands, and I can see him scoring 25 points tonight. I think 23-2 and two is very easy for him to do, and that rhymed. That sh- I should be a rapper. That was crazy. <laughs> Spit bad bars. Exactly. Uh, who's like, your favorite DFS play out of the day? I think you just said it, but I don't think I get to hear that part because I found that one and I had to ask you about it. No, it's all good. Um, my favorite DFS play is constantly changing. All these guys are being ruled out, but uh, I mean, I think Russell Westbrook probably has to be. Uh, as long as, as Bradley Beal is out, which I think he probably will be, I don't think the, the Wizards have a lot of incentive to play him. So uh, I just like, he's the most expensive guy, but I, I think you have to have him. Um, that's my favorite guy. So I'm a. Uh... I'm playing center right now. I'm looking for a center mm-hmm. in uh, my FanDuel lineup. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't get to talk FanDuel with a lot of people. This show is like, <laughs> I, I know betting is DFS. I, I know it, it, it links to this show, and I love talking about it. But while I'm building my lineup, I have right around 8,300, 8,400, sorry, in a cap. And I am $1,000 short for Bam at a bio. Mm. And I'm $100 short for Clint Capella. So my question to you is this. Do I come off of Jeremy Grant and go down to Chuma Okiki, who has been balling lately? Mm. Yes. Or do I just try and find a, a, a cheaper center, like maybe a Mason Plumley over a Capella, over a Bam out of the bio, and just stick right here? But then what am I going to do with this other $2,000? You know, I think Clint Capella could be in line for a big game without having to compete with uh, John Collins for rebounds and blocks. And he, we've seen he's got he's got a huge, huge ceiling. I think it was like the second or third game he came back. He had like what, eight blocks or something like that and mm-hmm. like 20 rebounds. I, it was something ridiculous. I can't remember exactly what it was off the top of my head. So, yeah, man, I, I think uh, Capella is a great, a great uh, play tonight. Uh, let me ask you, do you have Bogdan Bogdanovich in your lineup? Because bogey. Bogey just went off and he has all the potential in the world to go off again without John Collins in the lineup. He's going to get more PT. I don't. He's 4,200. I don't have him. I had Gallo. I thought Gallo would be. I have Gallo Gallo and Sadiq Bey. I think Sadiq Bey, who just went scoreless, I think he comes out with like eight three-pointers today and like two steals. That's possible, man. That DFS is hard, man. You have you have nine bullets. You got to hit all nine of them, man. It's uh well or eight if you're playing DraftKings. It's 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 tough. It's tough. I love I love it though because I get to tell people this story whenever we do get to talk about Fanduel. My PlayStation Four that I own right now, I won it because of Fanduel. They gave it to me. I got it with a nice. VR set. And it, what sucks is I was at the game. I was at the Kings game where uh, a trip to the Miami to watch the Heat play against, I think it was the Cavs or something, right? And you get to sit front row, and then they fly you back, and you get to meet, like, Dwayne Wade and LeBron James and stuff. Mm -hmm. Rudy Gay shot a horrible buzzer beater, like, shot, and Gorgie Dang got the rebound. I had Rudy Gay, and the person who got first place had had Gorgie Dang, and Dang got the rebound, and he won by, like, point two. (laughs) So it's a bad beat, man. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> but see, my mindset is this, though. Like, as great of a trip to Miami would have been, I at least, like, I still play my PlayStation today. You right? got many more hours of entertainment out of your win than the other guy did. That's probably That's true. true. That's, probably That's true. like, maybe I, maybe I actually won more because of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, Keith, I appreciate you jumping on the show with me today, man, and indulging me on my my FanDuel and, and really giving us – 
a different look at some of these other other picks that we have out here because I don't cover props enough. I think so. I think we definitely need to have you on more just so you and I can keep going over props because I love making them. I never feel confident enough putting it on any of my wager pass because I don't talk about it enough here. So I don't think many people would follow me, but a show with you and I, I think it'd be a lot of fun to just keep going over these types of props. And again, going over uh, DFS, because even though we do have a DFS show, we can hit on some things that we're seeing as the news is breaking since we are recording at 1.30, 1.40 in the afternoon. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, we're perfect, perfect compliments because as far as that money line stuff goes, I'm, I'm still a noob. I'll, I'll be be honest here, uh, just kind of getting into that kind of stuff. So uh, but when it comes to props, man, it's just it's just really digging into the the game logs and trying to go deep. And uh, that's one thing I'm, I'm really good at. So I love putting together spreadsheets and things like that. So, uh, yeah, perfect compliment, man. Well, Keith, before I let you go, let the fans out there know where they can find you online and uh, what they can be expecting from you for. Uh, you know, the next week or for a while now with, with hoop ball. Yeah, man, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Ginsburg beats. It's a long one. It's G one N S B E R G B three A T S. And I apologize. It's so long, but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead say that one more time. A little bit slower. G one G one N S B E R G B three A T S Ginsburg beats. <laughs> Ginsburg beats guys go follow them. And, uh, you, are you writing any articles doing any more podcasts? Uh, with yeah. Who- yeah. If you, yeah, if you guys get the DFS pass, you'll be able to hang out. I mean, the discord over there, I, I do the DFS deliveries every, uh, what day is it? Wednesday. Oh my gosh. Yep. Wednesday. Uh, you'll know, you get the DFS delivery from me. And, uh, other than that, I'll be in the pods every Tuesday night with Mr. Uh, Mike Patria usually. And, uh, you'll see here those on Wednesdays as well. So, um, yeah, ch- check me out NBA DFS today. Guys, go check him out. That's Keith Cork. Go follow him on Twitter. You guys can follow me. I'm Vince Miracle at VM Center. Follow us, the website's gaming division at Hoopball Gaming, the site at Hoopball Tweets. This has been a hoop-ball.com presentation. We are sponsored by mybookie.ag and manscaped.com. I am sending you guys all those good vibes and good luck to all you gamblers out there. Remember, We're just going to keep filling this bag, y'all. And until next time, bye-bye. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.